and it's popping up. There we go. I think we're going. Can you see me okay? I can see you okay, yeah. Paul Webb. The man. Yes. Yes, Jack. Hey, good afternoon, for, sir. Yeah, good morning here. I hope you're doing well. Doing um, very well. Thank you very good. much. Good. So you and I were talking before we got onto this broadcast uh, about your specialty. I met you through some uh, some coaching avenues. Um, I've come to really appreciate the shit out of you, and you know that. Uh, you're clearly not from the United States because you wouldn't have said good afternoon, and you've got that silly accent. That we're London, to baby. <laughs> um, so let's, let's do this. Um, today I want to talk about mindset there and I and I'd like you to also share just some things that are happening in um, in Europe and what you experienced a little bit different here so people can get understanding that this is not just um, a US thing right it's clearly a worldwide thing we're all affected by the same types of things um, for everyone watching Paul is uh, I would consider him a mentor he doesn't know that until just now because I follow everything he does um, with with notes that a student would in a graduate level class. So um, I appreciate all that you are. So a couple of things and I'm gonna let you ramble as I'm, I'm gonna wrap up. We talked earlier about, we're all certainly concerned about our physical health. That's the obvious thing yeah. in front of the entire world, right? Do we have it? Do we not have it? Loved ones that may or may not, what do we do if we get it, et cetera, and so on. A huge part of that, then, of the unraveling of our physical concern is our mental concern. Mm. And there's science that backs this. I know you know this better than I do, that if we start getting depressed and sad and all these other kinds of things, our immune system actually drops down yep. and we become susceptible not only to this particular virus, but to other things that could happen to us. Absolutely. So it is challenging our wits at this point, I think is a good way to say it, more so than probably anything sure. we've ever faced as a, as a world, as a planet. So I know of no one better than you to help me talk to my group and even help me a little bit. So with that said, talk about Paul Webb for a moment. Talk about the mindset and how we can all manage this kind of stuff and share any of anything else that you've got going on in your groups and in your neck of the woods. How's that? Does that work? That sounds perfect. Yeah. Thank you so much. Right. And thank you so much for your words. You know, um, I appreciate them. Um, we certainly have connected over the past few months and, and, and I appreciate you in my life and I'm more than happy to be here um, in this joint collaboration. Um, uh, thank you. Doing what I can to help. Thank so. you. Thank you for that. Um, so, yeah, as Jack said, I'm Paul. Uh, hi to you. I'm from London, UK. Um, ghost town at the moment. Um, completely ghost town. Never, ever in my 51 years have I seen anything like it. Truly haven't seen anything like it at all. London is one of those 24-hour, seven-a-day buzzing cities. And to see it completely deserted is just surreal. It, it really is unbelievable. Um, I've been in London all my life. I'm an ex-professional soccer player for you Americans, a uh, football player for us Brits and Europeans, um, and um, have been a coach for 31 years now, over three decades, um, helping athletes, Olympians, actors, actresses, CEOs, royalty, whoever wants to join my crazy world, uh, yeah. we see if we can help them. Um, but what I'm going to talk to you about today is, is kind of what I talk to everyone about. Um, and that's, um, well, it's a few things, really. Uh, we'll, we'll touch on fear. Uh, we'll certainly touch a lot on mindset. We'll touch on change because uh, times are changing, that's for sure. Um, and how we respond to that change will determine a lot about us and our businesses and our families and our relationships and our health going forward, for sure. Um, you know, uh, we're on lockdown in the, in the UK. Uh, we're into our second week of a three-week enforced lockdown. Most of mainland Europe have been on lockdown longer. Um, we were a little bit slow to the party. Uh, I think that this week is proving to be uh, um, the hardest week. There, there are quite a few deaths happening, quite a few uh, cases um, being notified in, uh, in the news uh, all the time. Um, so this is proving to be challenging. We've been told to socially distance if we go out. We're allowed to go out for essentials. We're allowed to go out for one hour a day for some exercise. 
but we've been told to socially distance. Now, um, I have a problem with that. Um, not stand apart from people, because clearly if we maintain a, a safe distance, then <laughs> the chances of us um, passing anything on is lessened. But I don't like the term social distancing, because I think now more than ever, we need to be connecting. We don't want to be distancing socially. Personal distancing, yeah, I'm all in favour for that, staying away from people when we're in queues or when we're out and about. But you need to be connected. Um, we do not do well in isolation. Um, you know, that's why um, in prisons, um, going into isolation is the, the harshest form of punishment. Um, so it's time where we need to connect with people, which is why I'm so pleased that we've connected and are mm -hmm. doing it. Um, I think that's very, very important. So, so I think it's important that we we work on our health, we work on our mentality, we work on our emotional state, we work on our relationships, and we work on our spirituality. I think all of it counts. It's all connected. It's all one thing. Um, and I think as we move forward, that's what we need to be doing. So hopefully over the next few Thursdays, that's what we'll be talking about, if that's okay with you. That totally works for me. So let me ask you this. What are some immediate things that people can do and i'm totally putting you on the spot right now well, yeah but right. yeah what are some things that people can do um again you and i spoke earlier and i told you that i've shared with my group and other people that i've worked with that um and i, and I don't want to trivialize this or make mm -hmm. it seem um overtly simple because right. I, I think it's critical and it's a practice like anything. Like a, lifting a weight or shooting a basketball is really not that difficult. Successfully doing it takes time and practice, right? So I've always shared with the group what you think is what you feel and what you feel is what you project. There's the physiological, the neuroscience and all that kind of stuff. And I've anecdotally shared stories with my group of how complete strangers have said there's a spirit about me. Yeah. Right. That I look around and go, what are you talking about? Um, to be fair to the group, I'm feeling even heavy. It's starting to get you know, I'm waking up in the morning. All right. Keep with the routine. So with all of that, are there little things that people can do um, again, not to trivialize it, to help get their mind in a place where the the continual flow of news stories do. You can't turn on the TV. No, I know. It's without it's so it's just so challenging. So how do we what would be some things you might recommend to people? OK, I, um, I'm going to take a step back here. OK. Um, and the first thing I'm going to say is uh, understand that everything is energy. Um, another word for energy is information. Right. So information is broadcast through the ether. Doesn't matter where where it comes from. And we're connected to it. We are receivers and transmitters of energy, of information. So we come across this information. We can come across it by switching on the TV, by picking up a newspaper, by hearing snippets of a conversation, by scrolling through our Facebook feed, whatever. But we come across this information. And this information goes into our conscious mind. Okay? Now, conscious mind is our logical mind. It's what tries to decide whether things are true or not true, whether they're right or they're wrong, et cetera, et cetera. So we have a choice here how we associate this information, this energy. So we can put a positive slant on it or a negative slant on it. And the choice is ours. And this is really important to understand. Even if you think you're not, you are choosing whether to accept it as negative or accept it as positive. And for every 100 people that accept it as a negative, there are probably 100 people that will accept it as a positive. Right. We mm -hmm. see the same information. How we interpret it is entirely up to us. OK, so that's the first thing to say. If we decide to go down the negative route, that usually comes from ignorance. And when I mean ignorance, I mean a, a, a lack of understanding of certain things. Right? And that could be anything. That could be a lack of understanding of what what the news is saying, a lack of understanding of how the human body works, a lack of understanding of how we mentally process things a lack of understanding of the subtleties of the laws of the universe and how they work. It could be anything. Right. Mm -hmm. But there's a there's a, a lack of knowledge there. And that 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 breeds um, f uh, doubt. Uh, that doubt and worry when we start to focus on that and start to get an emotional attachment to it, that seeps into our subconscious brain. 
Now, our subconscious brain is totally deductive. It can't tell the difference between something that's real and something that's imagined, right? It's like the boiler room on a ship. The captain is the conscious mind. He can see what's going on. He sends an order to the subconscious mind, says more power, less power, stop, reverse, yeah. whatever. And the engine yeah. room just does it, right? So we've impressed this worry, this doubt, this fear, right? And it can only be expressed in one way, as you say, through the body, right? What we project out there, it's expressed as anxiety. Now, what happens to most people when they get anxious? They suppress it, right? saying, oh, I feel a bit anxious. Can you give me some advice? We sit with it and we build on it because we're then coming from this place of anxiety. So what happens neurologically, the way the brain works is that we have something called a reticular activating system in our brain, or what's known as the RAS, R-A-S for short. And that's our filter between our subconscious and our conscious awareness. So once we start thinking in this anxious way, our RAS lights up and starts looking for things to be anxious about. Right? So we start seeing more negative news stories. We start hearing about more cases of people falling sick or dying. We start hearing about more unemployment. We start hearing about food running out. We start hearing about people arguing or breaking up or, or struggling. Right? And that expresses itself into a form of depression. Now, there are only two states in the universe. One's moving towards creation and one's moving back into disintegration. Right? That's how it works. So if you're not creating backwards, so what's happening from that dis depression comes dis-ease. From that disease comes destruction right? and ultimately death. And it can be a mental death, a spiritual death, or even a physical death. Mm -hmm. Right. But let's roll that back quickly and say we decide to think positively about what we the information we come across. Right. Because we've got a little bit of knowledge. Right. So I've got a little bit of knowledge. You've got a little bit of knowledge. And hopefully the people watching this now have a little bit more knowledge. Yes. Oh, there's another way. And sometimes that's all you need. Oh, is there another way? So is there a different way I can look at this? Well, of course there is. There's multiple ways. We live in an infinite universe. The quantum model of reality is a field of probability, potentiality, where every outcome exists at the same time. It has to. So every possibility exists. So it could be positive. So how can I look at it positively? Once we make that choice with that little bit of knowledge, what happens is instead of doubt and worry, right? I've got it written down here because I taught this lesson just the other day. Um, instead of doubt or worry, we have an understanding we have faith. Now, on one side, you have fear. On the other side, you have faith. The definition, I'm going to give you a definition of one of them, and I want you to tell me which one it is. Oh, no. Do some <laughs> so, faith or fear, definition. Belief in things as yet unseen. Which one is it? It's both. Is it's it? both exactly exactly i've you listened see? to you enough to know these things you've good. done it see? <laughs> so it's both so there is no difference in faith or fear except how we process it except in our perception right so by having faith and impressing faith upon the subconscious we express that because this information this energy comes to and through us right we express it in our body. So instead of feeling anxious and anxiety flooding every cell of our body, now what happens is we have a sense of well-being and that well-being is flooding every cell in our body. Right? And that well-being leads to feeling at ease instead of disease. And then we can be creative instead of destructive. And then we have the ability now to create a new reality in our lives. Yeah. Yes. So that's the first thing to understand, that you are completely in charge and have a choice. Right? Now, how can we go about what can we do to start putting some processes in place to think more positively, to act more positively and to come from a place of wellness and at ease and creativity? Well, understand from fear, 
your mind is flooded by stress hormones and that shuts down your prefrontal cortex where all your higher faculties are, your imagination, your intuition, your will, your memory, your focus, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So if hormones are flooding that area, you lose all that ability. So you're just like a, a cork in the wave, in the sea, just bobbing up and down and being buffeted everywhere. But when you stay calm, when you stay fully present, when you're well and grounded, you're like the oarsman. You've now got an oar and you can direct where you're going. But the sea is still rough. You know, shit mm -hmm. still happens. Yeah. You know, yeah. conditions, we're not in charge of conditions. We're only in charge of our internal state, which means we can react and respond to the conditions and alter the conditions we face. Right. So a great thing to do, a great thing to do is a three part exercise I can give you right now to crack on with. And this is going to sound a little bit fluffy to some people, but trust me, this works. All right. So here you go. So yeah. first thing in the morning when you get up, before you switch on your phone, before you check out the news, before you've engaged with the day. Get a piece of paper and a pen, old school, because there's power in writing this down, right? And write out up to 10 things you're grateful for, right? That's up mm. to 10 things. And it could be just for the pen you're holding. It could be for the fact that you've woken up. It could be for the bird song you hear, which I heard beautifully this morning when the sun came up. It could be anything, but you write down 10 things. That's the first task. Take you two or three minutes. The second task is to sit silently, comfortably for five to 10 minutes and just go within. Just listen to what you're saying. Now, this can be difficult for a lot of people because of mm -hmm. that in their mind. So just focus on your breathing. Just see how you're feeling and then write down how you're feeling. And the real killer, the <laughs> right? send unconditional love to somebody or something that's stressing you, uh, vexing you, uh, annoying mm. you right now. Mm. Right. So here's the thing. We're going to do 10 things to be grateful for. We're going to get quiet and listen to it, ourself, our spirit, our soul, right? And then we're going to send love to someone or something that's not going well in your life. That's it. Do that every day for 30 days before you switch on any media outlet and then let me know how you feel. Dude, I don't know what else to say other than brilliant. This is why I enjoy you so much. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I'm just going to go to the Paul Webb school from this point forward in the rest of my life. You know how much I appreciate you. That's awesome. Great context. Um, great setup to brilliant as always, you know how much I appreciate you. Yeah. Um, so, Tell the group now, because I, I know we both have schedules to attend to. Yeah. Um, and so thanks for spending the last 15, 20 minutes or so. Tell the group about, uh, I think you've got an event coming up. Yeah. Uh, I, with your, uh, with I, what you do. Yeah. Yeah. So, so um, I had a speaking engagement coming up in April, in, a, in two weeks today, actually. And it was a live event, but obviously due to the lockdown and what's been going on, that got cancelled. So here's the thing. You can look at it negatively or you can look at it positively. So I went to the organizer of the event and I said, how would you feel about making it an online event? Let's do it online. Let's not worry about canceling it. Let's change it. Let's make it an online event. So uh, the wonderful Dr. Haider Al-Hakim, who's an eye doctor here in the UK, and I are co-hosting an online event on the 16th of April at 6.30 p.m. our time, which I believe is 12.30 lunchtime. 12.30, mm -hmm. yep. Um, it's called Breaking Through. It's about mindset. It's about breaking through the current paradigm of what's going on. It will only be for an hour. It's ridiculously low priced. We've kept it really low. I think it will be probably about $12 for, for, for you guys over there. Oh, the my God. Pound of, so it's going to be just it's a giveaway. Um, it is. But, um, we are launching it officially tomorrow. So I will put a link in the group for you when that's been launched so you can see Wonderful. and have a look at what it's all about. Yeah. Outstanding. You're the best, my man.
Thank you so very much. So, Paul, what I make everyone do at the end of any of my conversations, so I apologize for forcing you to do this, but it's a thing that I do because I used to be in a band and all that stuff. So I make people do peace and rock on as my closing. So you got to do it with me. Peace. Look at you. Got to figure out a time when I when, uh, when all this, when all this settles. You have invitation, let me tell you. Same. You know that too. Yeah. Paul Webb, phenomenal. So in the group, after this video is posted, throw any links below that so we can keep rolling yep. on it. And if there's any and, questions, uh, if you want to ask me anything, always. no matter how stupid it seems, throw it in there and I will come in and I will answer them all. Don't worry. Absolutely. I appreciate that. Dude, you rock on. I'm going to close this up and we will talk next week, my man. Perfect. Thank you. All right, dude. You are the best. Thanks.